Hey everyone, Scott Cunningham, aka Sconcy Business. Today we're going to be talking about quantitative easing and how it's going to boost Bitcoin. So the last video I made was very, very drawn out, so I wanted to redo this. But um, essentially, Bitcoin is having in 30 days. What this means is the block reward for the people mining the Bitcoin will go down from 12.5 to 6.25. What that really means is the inflation rate of Bitcoin is dropping from 3.6 to 1.8, which is very, very close to what the United States was last time I checked. Um, but currently they have they're doing quantitative easing. Same with the uh, with Canada, which is massively going to impact our inflation and um, will leave the burden on me and you, the taxpayer, the average consumer. So what is going to happen in 30 days is bitcoin its inflation is going to have and currently in canada and the us we are going through quantitative easing which will almost inevitably lead to hyperinflation what quantitative easing is is where central banks print more money in order to encourage people to to borrow because essentially they're buying up all of these um, bonds and they're trying to drive down uh, yields and interest rates so that it's cheaper for, or more viable for people to take out loans, uh, mortgages, just sort of encouraging people to transact and, uh, and participate in the economy while everyone's kind of hoarding their money right now and reluctant to do so. This is how you can encourage people to come out and um, participate more in the economy during this hard time while this makes sense is a short-term solution in the long term quantitative easing almost always always inevitably leads to hyperinflation and and it makes sense as to why this happens when you're printing money out of thin air which is what we're always doing with fiat currency um the inflation rate is at a certain rate correct so last time i checked it was 1.8 or very close to 1.8 when you have quantitative easing and you're printing trillions of dollars that massively raises the inflation rate which ends up you know maybe it goes up to three percent or you know 3.5 percent or maybe you know 3.6 which is what bitcoin was at or is at now before the halving so say they swap places in inflation bitcoin is now half the inflation of fiat and fiat is double the inflation of bitcoin well that means that if you're holding money in your bank account you're losing money every year um and that is not good right your value of money is going down every year if you put it into gold and it goes up your money is going up every year if you put it into bitcoin and bitcoin goes up your your money your value is going up while bitcoin is extremely volatile the inflation rate of bitcoin is going to be so much less than fiat that it just makes it such an obvious value proposition like such a good value it's already going to be an amazing value because the uh bitcoin is going to have its inflation and it has you know a really good low supply cap and there's a bunch of other reasons why bitcoin has value and i'll link to my previous video on that which explains you know everything about its integrity accountability there's no counterfeits um all the, all the different things that make it worth a lot of value all of those don't really apply very well to regular fiat currency so when that is going to be having a way higher inflation rate which will inevitably end up the the way that this is fixed or corrected rather is in the short term this helps uh businesses and this helps people kind of get back into the economy i mean it doesn't really help businesses in the short term it just helps the average person but when they're going out and spending money that is going to help boost you know the uh, the profits of the businesses and the banks and whoever that they're spending the money with they are they're fine with it right they are getting that money we are only borrowing that money which has been newly printed 
And then essentially what's going to happen is everything that we buy will increase in price. And this is how they will correct the issue of inflation. Now, this happens all the time anyways. But because of hyperinflation, we'll see a very large price increase that is very noticeable. Normally, it happens very subtly, whereas now we'll see a massive gain. So say you go to McDonald's and you buy a McDouble and it costs $1.50. And then in a year from now, it costs $2.50 because of hyperinflation. Obviously, that's a drastic example, but that could be what we end up seeing. Essentially, what happens is me and you, the average consumer, the taxpayer, the the lowest common denominator, we pay the higher prices for all goods, whereas everyone else kind of avoids the burden of paying for this, right? Because the businesses are selling at higher prices to deal with inflation. So for them, barely anything has changed. For us, we have the same amount of money in our pocket, but everything we buy now costs more. And if you were foolish enough to leave all your money in the bank, uh, your, your bank's money is also worth less as well because of inflation. So your money is worth less and everything costs more. That is not a good long-term solution. Me and you, we're the ones who have to pay for this. Our kids, grandkids, they take on the burden of these little short-term solutions. And while I don't have a better solution to offer, there is now an opportunity. And that opportunity is that the Bitcoin block having is about to happen. This was already going to be, you know, a huge increase for, for Bitcoin. This was already going to be a huge value opportunity. This, this has only happened. We've only seen this once and then a second time. And now we're going to see the third time. The first time it went up about 8,000%. Second time about 3,000. Say it goes up 500%. That will be insane gains for people. Okay. You got to realize how much of an impact that that would make. That would be game changing for people. So the thing is here, right? This was already going to be a great opportunity. It might have been dampened a little bit by the stock market and everything going on. But now, now that its inflation rate is probably going to be lower than fiat currency in 30 days, as if it wasn't already an amazing opportunity, it is, it is that much better. So, say it was out of out of five say this was like a 4.5 as a great opportunity now it's a five out of five because the value of money is also going down which should which should naturally also drive up the price of bitcoin so all these things are going to factor in all at the same time to drive up the price of bitcoin and while this is absolutely not financial advice definitely consider all these things are about to happen and there's only 30 days for you to really take advantage of this now do note that it did take you know maybe like a hundred days and then here it took almost like a year to get up to its max but even if you know you go and wait half that time and you sell you're still laughing i mean if we see even a small percentage increase comparatively to the previous, people are still going to make so much money, right? If you see a hundred percent increase, 200% increase, anything like that will still have such an amazing impact. And not only is it going to impact like Bitcoin, it's going to impact every cryptocurrency because everything is pegged largely to the value of Bitcoin because of Bitcoin dominance. And if I go into Blockfolio right now, just to double check what the Bitcoin dominance is for today, which is um, April 12th. Today, the Bitcoin dominance is at 64%. So again, it is still majorly dominant. And because there's so many trading pairs that use Bitcoin, naturally, that usually ends up massively impacting all the other coins. So if you hold almost any coin that you're holding that 
moves in relation to Bitcoin, which is most coins, you'll probably see an increase in value. Like you don't even have to invest in Bitcoin if you're already invested in crypto to see um, some gains out of this. But again, you know, do all of your own research, <clears throat> look into everything yourself. The reason that this is so big of a, such a big deal is that there's so much uncertainty around what will be the inflation for uh, like Canadians and, and Americans in like a year from now, two years from now, how much of a price increase are we going to see? None of that is obvious to us. When will they stop printing money? There's no way for us to know. With Bitcoin, we know exactly how much has been printed, what's going to be printed, what the inflation rate is at any given moment and when it will uh, change. Everything is certain. For for you to confidently invest in something, you want to like mitigate risk and, un and uncertainty. Obviously, there's risk with the volatility of Bitcoin, but there isn't uncertainty in terms of what it is going to do. The price will always be uncertain, but the actual like the execution of uh, its processes and the way that it's like hard coded in all these things are hard coded in. So there's no way to get out of it, right? There's no way to manipulate it or change it. So like gold, which we can't really manipulate, we can't create more gold. I mean, obviously, there's that um, there's this like saying where people say, yeah, but what if one day we find a planet made of gold and we mine all that gold and then we bring it back? It's like, yeah, that will definitely decrease the value of gold. But how expensive is it going to be to um, send out mining ships like billion dollar spaceships to go mine gold and then transfer it back? I wouldn't even be surprised if it kept basically the same value because of how expensive uh, the rocket ships are, the fuel, the limited space that they have to be able to transport it. How far away is this gold planet? Um, that's an unrealistic thing to be concerned about for the future in for gold, but that's not even something that can be a concern for Bitcoin because there never will be more than 21 million. That's what makes it so safe in terms of its supply. Anyways, though, I don't want to go too far into the different reasons that Bitcoin has value because I'm going to link that. I wanted to just touch on this because I think it's really important for people to a be aware of uh, quantitative easing and and how this is going to affect your finances in the next you know few years, and then with Bitcoin and all the opportunities that you have right now that is being propelled further by this. I just want to make sure everyone is aware of the opportunities that they can take advantage of right now in the market. Let me know what you guys think, though. Do you think Bitcoin is going to be bullish after we see the halving happen? It has in the past. Um, but again, as it's uh, as it continues having each having is less impactful. So we do have to recognize that at the beginning when it have that was the most impactful. And then the second one was pretty impactful as well. But then as you keep going, it's less and less and less. And then it's almost unnoticeable because when you're having a half of a half of a half of a half, it's very insignificant compared to the original halves. So you can see this chart sort of explains how this would work. And um, the last Bitcoin won't even be mined until the year 2140. So, you know, we're still over 100 years away from seeing that happen. But anyways, let me know what you guys think about this. Is Bitcoin going to shoot up? How is this going to affect everything else? How is quantitative easing going to affect Bitcoin? Will it be boosting it? Let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you watch to the very end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to comment hashtag number one ham in the comments below. That way I know you watch to the very end. And as always, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'm Scott Cunningham, aka Scotsy Business, signing off. Cheers. Thank you.